it's too fake. It's too fake for me and I'm done. I was finally getting everything under control and then this happened. Hey everybody, it has been a while. I've been dealing with a lot, I've been going through a lot, and I've been navigating a lot. But here I am. For those of you who have happened to stumbled upon my channel, my name's Daniela and I'm on a journey to lose over a hundred pounds. This is my progress thus far, and in the last two years, let's be honest, my progress has slowed down. Now, the good news is, like someone mentioned on my Instagram post, is that I have been able to keep the weight off. That is something that a lot of people struggle with, so I gotta give kudos to myself. My results have been long lasting, and I've made improvement in my physique. I'm more muscular. However, I'm just not happy with how this progress is moving. And this is where we jump into the hard truth of being a weight loss YouTuber. We will talk about this situation later, so make sure you hang tight to figure out what went on there. So, hard truths about being a weight loss YouTuber. I was watching a video by Cole Robinson, the gentleman from The Snake Diet. And he was talking about how, in his Albertan way, <laughs> about how he has some truth in the way he talks, and sometimes I listen to him, how we gotta get off social media sometimes because if you're not in the right spa headspace for social media, you are gonna get wrapped up into its dark black hole and you are just going to destroy yourself. I've seen it happen to popular YouTubers. I used to watch, like, uh, Life with Lee, unfortunately, um, she was a major YouTuber, Van Life with Max and Lee, and she unfortunately passed away, and social media bullying had uh, a lot to do with it, and I know from what I gathered from her, she was very much a people pleaser, but let's, let's go into why I'm talking about my issues with being a YouTube content creator right now. I'm not in a good headspace, and when you're not in a good headspace, and you're going, and you're trying to create content, and you're trying to stand out, it can really erode your self-esteem. Now, I have always been one person who has been confident. I have very high self-esteem. But as soon as I turn on that phone, and I scroll through, and I look at people, and I see that their accounts are blowing up, and then I'm like, why is my account not blowing up? What am I doing wrong? You know what that does to someone's self-esteem? it brings it down. When you're a content creator, you're constantly looking at analytics. Look at my analytics, seeing followers fluctuate up and down. Instagram used to be my safe haven. That ain't working for me either because I don't know what they did to their algorithm, but that has completely changed. And a lot of people are using and paying for services, so do not compare your YouTube account to other people's YouTube account if you're a content creator, because a lot of people actually pay for automated services to help their account move up. I ain't doing that. I don't want to do that. Why do that? If people do that, kudos to them, but that's just not what I'm about. I'd rather do it organically. And I've been struggling with this concept about losing weight and content creating, and I stumbled upon a video by my girl Louise's journey, and she talked about how um, she tried to lose weight on YouTube in the beginning, but it just wasn't working for her. And then she ended up losing tons of weight. The girl looks amazing. She lost a lot of weight. She ended up competing on stage. And that is one of my goals. And in the video, she further talked about how people on YouTube like to watch train wrecks. It's true. People love train wrecks. People prefer not to see people who are successful, I guess. I don't know what it is, but YouTube is an entertainment platform. So people love to see all of that. And I personally don't want to get caught up in all of that. I, my goal is to lose this weight. And the only way I'm going to lose this weight is if I focus on myself in, in its entirety. I'm not stressing over a YouTube video. I'm not stressing over analytics. I'm not participating in the fakeness of it where you gotta go comment on other people's account so they can literally check out your video. It's too fake. It's too fake for me and I'm done and that's just not who I am. 
Let's be honest here. A lot of YouTubers struggle with losing weight on YouTube. There is a reason for that. Hard truth of being a weight loss YouTuber is that you are constantly battling the algorithm and it takes energy away from your weight loss journey. It really does. And especially for someone like me who battles with BED, heck, I need to be putting all of my mental efforts into battling BED, into battling my chronic depression, and now into battling this car crash situation. And I'm just gonna do this my way now. I have told myself I'm really going to go into the next 90 days fully committed to my journey. I'm going to give it my all. Your mental health is your number one priority. Social media will always be there, but will your health always be there? If you are going to sacrifice your mental health for an algorithm, that is not worth it. Anything that sacrifices your mental health is too expensive. So that's where I'm at. I'm done done slaving away for an algorithm. I'm done trying to grow my account. I'm done comparing myself to other people. Like I have never been that person. That is not me. It's not who I am. But I come on here and I'm constantly looking at my analytic pages and I go see other people. I'm doing that. So we're counting that off. Am I disappearing from YouTube completely? No, but I will be sparingly posting content for the foreseeable future. I'll probably be back in full force in December because that's where things will change. <laughs> that's where things will change big time where I plan on having a completely new physique, like completely new, completely different. I am pulling all the stops to make sure this happens, but I need the time to do so. Now, going back to the car accident. So, on Sunday, May 15th, I was already so focused to get back into the game. A week prior, I celebrated my birthday, I celebrated Mother's Day. Mother's Day started off pretty rough, but that's a different story. Um, but it ended up redeeming itself because I ended up celebrating my birthday and Mother's Day for a whole week. So after that week-long celebration, I kind of made the commitment because I felt like my body was finally adjusting to the demands of work. Roll in Monday, May 16th. I'm at work. I'm loving my job. I'm paired with an awesome dreamman who I love and I was learning so much for him. I go up for lunch and then I am going back to work. I'm in the right lane. I see someone pulling out from a gas station. Now, I don't trust people on the road. So I saw her, I was staring at her, and this person completely stopped. As soon as I was right in front of her, she gunned it, literally gunned it. And she's in a sports car. She gunned it, hit my car, I spun into the left lane, and I ended up going on an island and I hit a tree. Thank God I was not T-boned again on the left side because I probably wouldn't be here speaking to you today. That accident was very unfortunate. I am so angry about it because now our family's completely set back. I've been off work for about a couple weeks. I'm still gonna be off work for another few weeks. I'm dealing with grade two whiplash, a very severe concussion. And I thought I was in the clear with the concussion, but yesterday I ended up getting such bad symptoms. I had to lie down on the couch and I've been exhausted. I've just been exhausted. My quality of life has gone downhill. Working out, I was able to work out for the first time in two weeks since the accident because my physio knows that I'm gonna lose my mind. I have a different physio to help me deal with the accident. Um, I have my pelvic floor physio dealing with my pelvic floor issues. Fun, let's add in more issues to my body. And now I have an MVA physio. I told her I'm, I'm very active, she knows that. So she's modified some exercises for me. I managed to exercise for the first time. I was really proud of myself. I was in a lot of pain, I almost fainted. And um, I told my physio that and she said, if you are going to faint, just relax, stop, pause, let the lightheadedness and the dizziness pass and then go right back to your workout. So I have permission to work out. I just gotta be careful 
Lunges are good. Squats irritated my injury, so she gave me this modified version to do wall sit squats. So I'm super excited for that. And shout out to my girl Kirsten Quit Fit because I'm part of her membership and she's going to be doing a wall sit challenge in June and that I can do. So I'm really happy. So this accident took a lot away from me. I couldn't meditate. I couldn't focus. My adrenaline was high. I couldn't exercise. And these are things I use to help with my mental health symptoms. But now we are slowly making our way forward, but I have to be careful because what I wanted to mention before was after that workout, I had to lay down for the rest of the day. I, my body's just exhausted. It's tired. This injury is pretty intense and I don't know how it's going to affect things, but I'm so blessed because I have so much help, guys. I've got two physiotherapists. I've got a concussion specialist and I am going to see an OT in a psychologist because I'm psychologically messed up but <laughs> thank you to my insurance company because they've been taking care of me now we got to figure out the car situation we don't have a car right now we have a rental hopefully the insurance companies can do what they got to do relatively quickly but I heard that can take two weeks to two months and then we can be seen not at fault because we're not at fault and the person who caused the accident was criminally charged because the police went on the scene and they're just like oh this was so stupid absolutely stupid um it was a dumb accident I was told when I came out of the car she was not looking at the road at all so don't text and drive people please don't do that because you can ruin someone's life and your own life but I'm a fighter, I will get through this, but with everything going on, I just need time to breathe. Now, I have a few commitments that I did commit to. I do a live every month with fitness friends. That is Trail Sage, Paul from The Dove Runner, and my girl Kirsten Quickfit. We rotate channels. This month, it is my channel, so I'll be hosting a live this Thursday, June 2nd, at I believe at 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I will put a little blip up on my channel so you guys can come in and join. I also have another YouTube video up daily loaded on calories, and I have a few YouTube videos that I committed to. But once I'm done with all of that, your girl is going to be disappearing, and I'm just not going to be actively killing myself for an algorithm. I am going to be chasing my damn goals. I'm putting my effort into my goals and I promise you when I'm back, I'll be back in full force and you will not recognize me. For everyone who has checked in on me, thank you. For all the content creators who have checked in on me, thank you. You guys are absolutely amazing. You know who you are. You guys are true Gs. And to all of the subscribers who have messaged me throughout these past couple months, Thank you. I'm still here. I ain't going anywhere. I just need some time to just get back on track and come back stronger than ever. Setbacks are truly just an opportunity for a wicked comeback. Anyway, thank you so much and I'll see you guys very soon. Take care.